Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to outline the common mistakes made by new deep rock players and how you can avoid them. I'll also break down a series of tips on how to maximize your earnings, experience, and manage your time effectively in the early game. Okay, let's look at the common mistakes rookies make. Number one, being a lazy miner. Resource gathering forms a large part of Deep Rock Galactic, so when you find a deposit of more kite, gold, or whatever, make sure you mine it all. This is important in the early game as the longer the missions go on, the more likely you'll run out of ammo, health or get killed by alien bugs. The quicker you can meet your quota the better, so get out your pickaxe and mine it all you lazy buggers. Number 2. Not respecting verticality. From time to time you'll find yourself on a mission delving deep down into the crust of Hoxie's 4. It's in these vertically challenging levels where new players often run into trouble. If you don't tread lightly or be mindful of your surroundings, you may fall to your death, leaving the rest of your squad one dwarf down as they seek a safe passage down to the bottom of the cave. A flare can help identify an upcoming problem as well as the terrain scanner, so look before you leap, open your eyes and don't be afraid to ask for help. Number 3. No Trigger Discipline For new players, trigger discipline is one of the most important things to consider because the aliens are everywhere and before you know it, your guns will run dry leaving only your pickaxe to defend yourself. Be disciplined with your shots, select your targets, get off a few rounds, reposition and repeat until the waves are gone. Because if you just spray the bullets without due care, you'll end up wasting half your ammo. Number four, running out of ammo and not gathering nitra. On the subject of ammo, new players have limited ammo reserves, so being able to call in a resupply is vital in the early game. If you see the red mineral nitra, mine it. Once you have 80 nitro, you can resupply 50% of your ammo for a four dwarf squad. Now, in time, as you level up your guns, you'll be able to extend your ammo bag, so running out won't be such a problem. But it's definitely something new players need to be aware of. Get nitro, even if you don't need it yet, you will later. Number five, friendly fire. In Deep Rock, friendly fire isn't harmless. It can injure and sometimes kill your dwarven brothers. So if you're in the midst of a wave, Think about firing lines, don't just shoot straight at the enemies if your teammates are ahead of you. Move to the side, find an angle, work as a team. Number 6. Not utilising your shields The rechargeable shield can and will save your life in Deep Rock, but it takes time to recharge, so if you're in the spot of bother with low health, run away, let your shield recharge. And if you're lucky, you might also find some red sugar that will boost your health on the way. Number 7. Ignoring injured teammates When a fellow miner gets injured, don't ignore them. Don't run away and get on with the mission or leave them to rot. You wouldn't like it, so if someone goes down, make sure you help revive them. Now there may be situations where you can't due to them falling down a cave or being surrounded by a dreadnought, but when the coast is clear, get them back in the game because a healthy team is a successful team. Number 8. Shooting Beastmaster Bugs in the perk tree, players can unlock the Beastmaster perk, which allows you to mind control an alien bug to fight by your side. But many new players are not aware of this, and I can't tell you how many times I've seen a new player shoot the shit out of my bug or other players' bugs, not realizing they're actually your friend. So don't shoot a bug if it's glowing, or if it's not attacking you or your friends. Leave it alone, it's your buddy. Number nine, wasting time on extra morkite. In mining expeditions, you have to mine Morkite. Once the quota is met, you can continue to search the level and mine extra Morkite. But is it worth your time? Well, it's a bone of contention in the community. Some say yes, some say no. For me, the amount of extra experience you gain from additional Morkite isn't really worth it. You'd be better off mining gold or searching for rare minerals, secrets, or just end the mission and start a new one. This way, you'll end up leveling up faster. Number 10. Not using Bosco and the Mule to full effect When playing in solo, Bosco is an incredibly useful ally that new players don't always use effectively. You can order Bosco to do things with your laser pointer, such as shoot, fire rockets, mine resources or dig through soil. Bosco can prove invaluable in egg hunts or levels where you have to find a quarks, as Bosco can mine them and carry them to you. The mule is also useful for things like getting a little extra elevation, like if you're trying to mine minerals on the ceiling, place the mule on the floor, stand on top of it and jump so you might reach it. Number 11. Being a lone wolf 
Deep Rock is a game with cooperative play at its core. The best teams I've played with work together using their tools and skills collaboratively to mine resources, fight off waves, or traverse the tricky environments. But you're always going to get that occasional lone wolf who thinks they don't need any support. Lone wolves can do more harm than good as they often get killed long distances from their fellow miners, meaning someone has to go get them. Lone wolves are particularly damaging in low oxygen levels, the missions that truly test your ability to work as a team. Obviously if you're playing solo, being a lone wolf is fine, but in co-op, do not be selfish, work together, and you'll level up faster. One piece of advice would be to pair up. Two teams of two dwarves, so if something goes pear-shaped, you always got a buddy there to help. Number 12. Not completing second objectives. Secondary objectives might seem unimportant, but they grant a decent amount of credits and experience. If you want to progress fast, complete secondary objectives as you might also find other goodies while completing these tasks. Number 13, not exploring the levels in detail. Some of the levels in Deep Rock are huge and many teams often miss hidden bonuses or valuable resources that they don't fully explore the cave network. Be thorough, search for bonus terminals or abandoned masks as in the long run, these things are nice to collect. Number 14, drop pod panic. We've all been there as new players. The drop pod gets called, you have a tense wait when the mule heads to the extraction point. Now, first thing to say is do not panic. Five minutes is a long time to get to the drop pod. Following the mule will result in successful extraction most of the time, but the odd occasion, the mule goes up sheer walls. But don't panic. Speak to your teammates. If you're with a driller, ask them to drill a tunnel to the pod, or just get out of your situation by checking the terrain scanner. But even the best of us do panic occasionally, so do not worry too much. Just try and be calm and try and focus. Number 15, blowing credits and minerals and things you don't need. At the start, your character is pretty lame, low health, small ammo bags, basic gear, but in time you can accumulate credits and minerals that you can use to level up your guns, equipment and armor. These should always take priority, get extra ammo capacity, improve your shield recharge rate, and it will really help you through the tough missions. One other thing I would definitely invest in is the daily special beer license. Now, it is expensive, but it gives you a special perk like the ability to gather extra gold or do more melee damage. These buffs can really help you level up faster if used in the right missions. Number 16, wasting perk stars. Perk stars are unlocked as you achieve certain milestones. Perks fall into two categories and I would recommend looking into them and deciding which ones you really want. Then invest your stars in the ones that you can. Don't just unlock everything as soon as it becomes available. Choose, choose more carefully. Okay, so those were the mistakes commonly made by new players. Now let's have a look at some tips to getting started. Number one, unlock the daily beer license as soon as possible. As I just said, the beer license is something I'd invest in really early as it gives you a little leg up. For example, drinking pots of gold beer if you're going into a level with a lot of gold formations can give you extra credits. Number two, identify the perks that suit your style and save up. You know, there's lots of cool perks in Deep Rock from thorns that inflict melee damage to aliens who hit you to ones that make loot bugs explode that save your kind of ammo or hover boots to stop you dying from a fall. Decide which ones you want to get, go for them. Also, it might be worth saving up for the special star which grants you an additional perk slot. Number three, identify weapon perks that work with your playstyle. The same applies to weapon upgrade perks. Look at the available options and purchase what suits you. If you need more ammo, buy that. More damage, buy that. Or whatever you feel is lacking. In time, you can buy them all, but early on, focus on what you really need to be effective. Number four, use Bosco in dangerous egg hunts. When you're doing an egg hunt, you can actually collect eggs while still in the drop pod in solo mode. If you can see it, instruct Bosco to dig it out and carry it to you. Put it in the mule and repeat for as many times as you can while in the safety of your drop pod. Now this is only a little tip, but if you're struggling with health, it can give you a little bit of a head start on a dangerous level. Number five, solo players should prioritize Bosco upgrades. If you're playing solo, Bosco is a vital tool that will help you succeed in the early game. So investing in upgrades for Bosco is very important. And once leveled up, Bosco can fire two missiles or even revive you up to four times. Number six, use the right class of dwarf in the right mission. Now you can use any dwarf in any mission, but some classes suit some missions better. For example, when you're doing the on-site refining level, the driller is perfect because those missions require you to build long pipelines through the environment. If you've got a driller, you can just drill a tunnel from A to B. 
Or if you're doing the escort mission with the drill dozer, the engineer is particularly useful because he can place platforms when you're mining oil shale or place turrets to protect the drill dozer from bugs. So think about the class before each mission. Number seven, use the environment to your advantage in combat. Hoxies 4 has several interesting environmental features that can hinder you and your allies, but they can also hurt the aliens. The green sticky sludge slows you down, but it can also create a killing floor where you can pick off bugs as they walk through it. The exploding bulbs can be great if you're experiencing a swarm. Dig a hole in the wall, wait for the bugs, then shoot one of the bulbs and watch them all explode in the bug's face. Or you can cause the ice cones in the frozen levels to freeze enemies. Be creative, use the environment, and it will help you in the long run. Number eight, use environmental elements to take advantage of traversal. Much like combat, level traversal can be helped by the environment too. Air pockets can help you reach high locations, special plants act like lifts, and many other variations can help you get around quicker. Number nine, use weak points for quicker kills. Enemy weak points are vital to success. One, they can serve ammo. Two, they kill bugs quicker. So find the weak spot, shoot it, kill it, and repeat. Number 10, turn off your flashlight. If you hold the circle button on PS4 or B button on Xbox, you can turn off your flashlight. Now you might ask, why would I want to do that? Well, in some levels, you've got to find certain resources and it's a damn sight easier seeing them glow in the dark without the flashlight on. So try that out. Number 11, helping teammates with environmental traversal. Deep Rock is all about teamwork. This is most apparent in getting around levels and the best teams will create safe passage for all. Drillers can create tunnels, engineers can create platforms or create bridges. The gunner can also put up a zip line and the scout, well, the scout can stand around and watch you do it. Help each other out, don't just rush away. Look back, see if your team can get where you are. If not, work it out together. Also, think about your exit strategy. Make sure you can get back up. Build a pathway on the way down so you're not in panic mode on the way out. Number 12, snowfall. A little tip for the ice level, if you see a pile of snow on the floor, it can break your fall, so use it if you need to get down in a hurry. Number 13, trigger discipline. As I said earlier, trigger discipline is key when you've got low ammo, but it also helps you be more effective and limits the amount of friendly fire. Number 14, team leaders should lead by example. If you're hosting a game, you are essentially the team leader, even if you're a new player. Be a good leader, think about the team, help your allies get around the level, point out the resources, give them cover when under attack, and most importantly, leave no dwarf behind. For me, when extracting, I generally aim to be the last one on the drop pod, as I shepherd the flock to the safety of extraction. Yes, sometimes the shit hits the fan, but being a good leader will pass on those good habits to other miners. Number 15, teamwork is the key to long-term success. Deep Rock is a game built on the foundations of teamwork and cooperative play. If you wanna make progress, being a team player will greatly benefit you and your allies, whether you're a new player or a chiseled veteran. Salute your fellow miners as you become an experienced player. Pass on the knowledge to rookies, show them the ropes, give them advice, and they in turn will pass on that advice to new rookies when they become a veteran. Deep Rock's one of those unique games where even a complete novice can save the day, so don't dismiss rookies. You were one once, help them as someone once helped you. Rock and stone, brother. We're rich. Okay, those were the rookie mistakes and how to avoid them and some useful tips for success in Deep Rock in early stages. I hope you found the video helpful. Any questions, drop them in the comments. If you'd like to watch my review of Deep Rock, I'll put that in the description. But for now, thank you for watching. This is Photography Gamer signing off. Thank you.